Today we're going to be talking about leash pressure and what that is is basically desensitizing your dog's opposition reflex to the leash. So we have a dog here named Marvin, little guy. So you'll see me bring the leash down to his shoulder level. And what I'm going to do is just gently put just barely any tension onto that leash. See how he's fighting it. Uh, all I'm looking for is one step in the right direction, which he just did. As soon as he does that, I'm going to say good, then give him a food reward, then reset for another repetition. So I get the leash, my hand on the leash about his shoulder level. I want to put gentle, just gentle tension into that leash. And as soon as he takes any movement forward, I'm going to say good and provide him a food reward for that. Okay. And this process over time, as you repetition it out, that's going to help your dog to understand to move with the leash, not against the leash. Okay. So I put a little bit of tension into the leash again at his shoulder level. All I'm looking for is a slight movement towards the, the direction that the leash is going. After that repetition, I take a couple steps a different direction, right? And then I'm going to again, go to his shoulder level, barely put any tension on the leash. As soon as he makes any movement with the leash, I'm going to say good, give him a food reward, then reset for another repetition. All right. And uh, a couple things you got to keep in mind while you're doing this, you know, if your dog's getting overly stressed by it, keep your session short because this may be something that your dog has never experienced before. But notice how I put the tension on the leash and I just wait. I'm not going to yank him. I'm not going to yoke him. Just gentle tension. As soon as he makes any movement into that direction on his own, notice a little bit there, he moved with the leash, but not on his own. There we go, right there. So as soon as he makes movement with the leash, I'm going to say good and reward him. But that movement has to be initiated by him. He has to be the one to make that movement himself. I don't want to force him to make that movement because it's not going to have the same result. Again, going to shoulder level, light tension on the leash. Okay. And then I'm just waiting for him to make any movement. One thing you can add in if your dog is struggling with this, what I'm doing right now, food lure. So you're going to have a piece of food in your hand. You show that to his nose. You have uh, your hand with the food in it move in the direction that the leash is moving. What that can do is kind of help kickstart the process. So again, I add the tension on the leash. I bring the lure in. I help him lure towards the direction the leash is moving. What that's going to do is communicate to him to teach him how to move with the leash, not against it. Okay. Now, most dogs, they move with this pretty quickly, but Marvin here is a little bit of a nervous dog. So what that does is, uh, when, when a dog gets nervous, uh, sometimes it can shut them down from being able to move as fluidly. So that food lure can really help in those situations. So I'm here doing a couple repetitions with the food lure. He's moving pretty fluidly with it, right? So I take a couple steps backward. I'm just going to reward him now for just maintaining with me, moving with me, right? That is going to help uh, him move with the leash. Then I reset for another repetition, go to shoulder level, put a little bit of tension on the leash with a food lure, right? As soon as he moves with it and is showing good movement into the direction of the leash, I say good, give him a food reward. Now, a couple things also, you might want to do different directions as far as tension goes on his neck so now i'm pulling gently to the side still at shoulder level a little bit of a food lure to help encourage him to move the way the leash is going and that lure is not going to be a permanent thing it's only going to be to help kick start this process okay but you might want to put some tension towards the side of his neck towards the front of his neck towards the back of his neck that way he knows no matter where that signal from the leash is coming from to move with the leash, not against the leash. That's the whole purpose of leash pressure work is to desensitize the dog's opposition reflex in regards to the leash and training collar on the dog's neck. We don't do this with the harness because we do like dogs pulling into harnesses. So again, I go to his shoulder level with the leash, gentle tension, food lure, he moves with it. I say, good, I give him a reward, right? And I'm basically gonna be repeating that because repetition in training is gonna be your best friend right? I move around a little bit. I have him move around a little bit. He's overall following me, right? Um, but still up to this point, he hasn't really shown uh, good movement with that leash pressure at all. And that's okay. We're still building this up. We're, we're developing it, right? Now, some dogs might move really quickly with this. They might move into that leash rapidly. Or you might have a dog like Marvin where it's taken many, many repetitions. It might take many sessions, See that time right there, we put some tension on there and a lure, right? He took a step and then he looked away. 
So then we lure him again. Once he takes that other step, then he's gonna be getting that food reward, right? So we're gonna be continuing that process until it's very clear to him. Here we go again, shoulder level, light tension on the leash, food lure, he takes a step with the leash, the leash is gonna be slacking, and I'm gonna say good, give him a food reward, okay? So again, don't sweat it if this takes you a couple sessions. Don't sweat it if it takes you a couple days. Don't sweat it if your dog masters this on the first session. This is something that you're gonna want to develop and constantly hash out over time. Now notice I'm pulling backward this time on him. Boom, he moves with the leash. I say good, I give him the food reward, right? So like I was talking about earlier, applying the tension, the light tension to various parts of his, of his uh, neck helps him know to move with that leash even better. That's what we call generalization, okay? So working on that, um, continuing with that, uh, those repetitions, Again, gonna go to shoulder level here, put light tension onto the leash, right? We wait for him, we wait. Patience is a virtue, we're waiting, we're waiting. As soon as he shows any movement to go, it's boom, right there. We say good, we give him a food reward, right? So as you progress with this, let's say you've done it with the luring, right? And uh, it's going smoothly, then you're gonna wanna take away your lure, which is what I'm doing now. But here we add a little bit in if he's looking confused. So don't be afraid to go back and forth with the lure and without the lure. You're constantly working to make his response to that leash better. Now here we're transitioning to a dog that's already completed with leash pressure work, so you can see the difference here. You know, Marvin still needs more sessions, so we're gonna show you here with Rosie uh, what that would look like on a finished dog. So same thing, we're gonna take the leash, we're gonna get to right about her shoulder level, put a little bit of tension in it. Notice how she moves just smoothly with that. We say good, we reward her. So again, that's an example of what it would look like when you're done. Right? Notice anytime I put tension on that leash, she's moving with the leash very fluidly. She's walking with the leash. I say good, I give her a reward. And again, you can continue repetitions of this, right? Right here, she's resisting a little bit, then she immediately moves with it, right? I can move her back and forth with the leash like this. So this is what leash guidance looks like. Leash guidance is whenever I put tension on that leash, the dog is moving with that leash, not against it. That's gonna help us with all other aspects of our training. That's gonna help us develop a loose leash walker from a dog that used to be a leash puller, right? So uh, now we're gonna be taking a short walk. If she goes ahead of me, which she just did, I can use that leash pressure to my advantage. I can use that leash to my advantage as a guide for her, right? So if I'm simulating walking in a straight line, right? If she's jumping, I'm going to ignore that. But notice how she goes ahead of me. I just slide down the leash. I use that leash as a guide to bring her back to my left side, back to where I want her to be. Then I reward her down my left leg, down the seam of my pants. That's where I'm gonna reward her at. Not in front of me, not behind me, down the left seam of my pants. So she knows that that's where I want her to be at. It builds up that reinforcement history. So this is just a great example of how, as you progress in your training, that that leash being a guide for you is going to help you in all aspects you can do it with healing with downing with sitting with a number of things and even after you're done with your training progression you can use it throughout life so check that out let us know what you guys think in the comments below we'll see y'all next time